In the ever-evolving landscape of modern air combat, where fifth-generation fighters dominate headlines and multi-role capability is a non-negotiable demand, India's own homegrown answer to these challenges has emerged with renewed promise, the HAL Tejas MK2. In 2025, the Tejas MK2 represents not just an upgrade of its predecessor, but a fundamental rethinking of what an indigenous multi-role combat aircraft can and should be. Born from decades of iteration, trial, and engineering resilience, the MK-2 is a bold leap forward in India's aerospace ambitions, marrying sleek design with potent performance and advanced avionics into a compact yet powerful package. The Tejas MK-2 builds upon the light combat aircraft LCA Tejas platform developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, but with significant enhancements that redefine its category. It's now a medium-weight fighter MWF no longer just a light combat aircraft. This change isn't merely cosmetic, it is rooted in concrete upgrades in dimensions, payload capacity, engine thrust, and mission versatility. The MK-2 is physically larger than the MK-1 and MK-1A variants, with a length increase from about 13.2 meters to approximately 14.65 meters, and a wingspan now stretching over 8.5 meters. This increase translates directly to more internal fuel capacity and room for mission-critical avionics and systems. The all-up weight has grown accordingly pushing the maximum takeoff weight to about 17.5 tons, up from the 13.5 tons of the MK-1A. What powers this new beast is the formidable GEF-414 INS-6 engine, a major jump from the F-404 GEIN-20 that powers the Tejas MK-1. The F-414 produces about 98 kilonewtons of thrust with afterburner, providing the MK-2 with a thrust-to-weight ratio and acceleration characteristics comparable to much larger fighter aircraft. This new engine opens the door to sustained supersonic performance, faster climb rates, and greater agility in air combat scenarios. The aircraft can comfortably cruise at Mach 1.6 and sprint even faster when needed, while maintaining excellent fuel efficiency during loiter or patrol missions, thanks to its redesigned aerodynamic profile and wing structure. The canards, small, forward winglets just behind the cockpit, add significantly to its maneuverability, enhancing both pitch control and lift generation during high angle of attack maneuvers. Internally, the Tejas MK-2 is a marvel of integration. It incorporates an indigenous active electronically scanned array AESA radar, initially the UTOM radar developed by DRDO, which rivals the best Western and Russian radar systems in terms of target tracking, electronic warfare capabilities, and multi-target engagement. This radar gives the MK-2 a high degree of situational awareness, even in dense electronic warfare environments. The sensor suite is further reinforced by an advanced infrared search and track IRST system, missile approach warning system MAS, and radar warning receiver RWR all of which create a 360-degree dome of awareness for the pilot. The cockpit is a world-class environment of digital integration. The Tejas MK-2 uses a wide-area display WAD, similar to what you'd find in fifth-generation jets like the F-35, allowing the pilot to view and manipulate mission data, sensor feeds, and aircraft systems in real time. Everything from weapons control to sensor fusion is accessible at a glance. The pilot interfaces with the aircraft via a combination of hands-on throttle and stick POTAS controls, voice commands, and touchscreen inputs. In essence, it's a glass cockpit fused with artificial intelligence support that helps reduce pilot workload in high-stress scenarios. Weaponry is another domain where the Tejas MK-2 flexes its upgraded capabilities. With 11 hardpoints, up from 8 on the MK-1, the MK-2 can carry a diverse array of ordnance including air-to-air -air missiles like the Astra MK-1 and MK-2, Python 5, and potentially even the Meteor if integration with Western partners moves forward. For ground attack, it can deploy laser-guided bombs, smart anti-airfield weapons SAAW, and BrahMos Inc. cruise missiles in the future. The increased payload capacity of around 6.5 tons, compared to 5.3 tons on the MK-1, means it can carry more and stay in the fight longer. This multi-role armament capability is what defines the Tejas MK-2 as a true swing-roll aircraft, one that can seamlessly transition from air dominance to ground strike in the same mission. Design-wise, the Tejas MK-2 carries forward the delta wing configuration of its predecessor but enhances it with close-coupled canards and a slightly revised fuselage for better aerodynamics and internal space. The changes are not only cosmetic, they provide measurable improvements in performance and control. The use of composite materials remains a key feature, with over 70% of the airframe made from carbon fiber reinforced polymer. This not only reduces radar signature but also weight, enabling better fuel efficiency and maneuverability. 
The radar cross-section is further minimized with the internal design of sensor housings and weapon pylons, making the MK-2 more survivable in contested environments. On the survivability front, the MK-2 incorporates a robust defensive aid suite. This includes electronic countermeasures ECM, chaff and flare dispensers, and jamming pods, all coordinated through an electronic warfare management system. The combination of onboard sensors and active protection gives the aircraft a significant edge in electronic warfare heavy scenarios, enabling it to defend itself in multi-domain battle spaces. When it comes to mission flexibility, the Tejas MK-2 is designed to be a true all-rounder. It's capable of performing air interdiction, close air support, deep strike, maritime strike, and air superiority missions with equal effectiveness. This is not just a claim on paper, the avionics and weapon systems have been configured to support multiple mission profiles simultaneously. In fact, one of the standout features of the MK-2 is its quick turnaround time and maintenance-friendly design. HAL has incorporated modular components and easier access panels that reduce downtime between sorties, a crucial factor in high-tempo combat operations. Export potential is another story unfolding in parallel to the MK-2's development. Countries in Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America have expressed interest in the platform as a cost-effective yet highly capable alternative to Western fighters that are often more expensive and difficult to maintain. The MK-2's affordability combined with indigenous components gives it a strategic advantage for nations seeking autonomy in their defense procurement. Add to that India's rising reputation as a defense exporter, and the MK-2 is poised to become a cornerstone of diplomatic and defense outreach. The aircraft's development is a story of resilience and gradual mastery. Initial delays and skepticism were overcome through iterative improvements and real-world feedback from Indian Air Force pilots flying the MK-1. These experiences fed directly into the design of the MK-2, with frontline pilots participating in simulator evaluations and even early test flights. The result is a platform that reflects operational realities, not just theoretical possibilities. This user-centric approach is rare in fighter development programs globally and is one reason why the Indian Air Force is reportedly looking to procure over 100 units of the MK-2 in the coming years. Strategically, the MK-2 fills a critical gap in India's force structure. It will eventually replace legacy platforms like the MIG-29, Mirage 2000, and Jaguar, many of which are nearing the end of their service lives. The MK-2, therefore, becomes not just an indigenous achievement but a practical necessity in India's aerial defense posture. Its advanced capabilities ensure air parity with adversaries, while its affordability and domestic manufacturing reduce long-term dependency on foreign suppliers. What also sets the Tejas MK-2 apart is its growth potential. The airframe and avionics have been designed with open architecture in mind, allowing for future upgrades without requiring a full redesign. HAL and DRDO have already considered integrating next-generation features such as directed energy weapons, drone control pods, and even unmanned flight capability. This future readiness ensures that the Tejas MK-2 will remain relevant not just for the next decade, but possibly well beyond. The aircraft has also been a testbed for advancing India's industrial base. Its development has spurred innovation across numerous public and private sector companies, 